Hi, I'm Corinne Lesh with EdScoop, and I'm here with Mark Edwards. Mark, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Corinne. Glad to be here. So why don't we start by talking a little bit about, I know there's a lot going on at Mooresville, mm -hmm. um, but what are the top technology priorities right now? Well, we are a, what I would call a mature one-to-one -one district. We're, we're entering our ninth year where we've had a one-to-one. -one. Our students, K through 12, all have their own device. We haven't bought a textbook in about seven years now, so we have a very mature, high-performing uh, implementation. And right now, we're, we're really working on taking it to another level in terms of a, a pedagogical frame. Uh, we're using some of the work of Michael Fullen and Andy Hargreaves on really aligning the work that we're doing with students to the workplace of tomorrow, so a lot around project-based and a lot around research. Mm -hmm. And how did you go about choosing, you know, specific software or tools or digital programs? Well, it's something that we have worked on for several years. Again, we're in, uh, have been in it nearly a decade. So we use uh, teacher teams, our technology staff, central office staff, and we're constantly, about four times a year, we go through a, what I would call a real serious review of online content. Uh, we're constantly excited about the fruition of what I call really robust digital content that, that really represents a, a game change effect for both teachers and students. But we use Teams and we're constantly looking at content and we'll select new content, we'll declutter. We currently use about 50 different providers, but it's, it's, it's a malleable uh, situation is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. We think we have a obligation to constantly look at new evolving content, but at the same time there are some resources that we've used every year for nine years. Great. Um, can you tell me a little bit about um, the challenges that you faced when implementing, you know, there's a lot of moving parts involved mm -hmm. and um, students obviously are, uh, you know, could be a chaotic group to deal with sometimes. So. How did, how did you deal with that? Well, early in the years, we, we really staged what I would call a formative implementation that we started small to go big. So we started small and really created a foundation both with the community, but also with teachers and students. Over the years, that has evolved, and we've really worked at developing the capacity, both the cultural capacity, the performance capacity, of our teachers and students and that has really been it's been both a challenge but it's been a lot of fun and now we're seeing teachers that have evolved in terms of their teaching style their strengths and then we always tie it back to academic achievement we rank one out of 115 districts in North Carolina we rank near the bottom 99th in funding and yet we rank in the top two or three in almost every academic area so we're, we're constantly evolving and using that process. And the challenge really, I think, is around change knowledge. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. We're learning more about that and about how teams and individuals navigate change, understand it, embrace it, and then actually use it as a catalyst to grow and to learn even more. Great. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, how you work with your IT leadership and how that process is? When there's a new initiative that you want to implement, do you does it come from you and your leadership team, or does it come from the bottom up? Well, it really comes from I would say it's a bottom up, top down, and, and amalgamation in the middle. <laughs> so it's kind of just a a mashup. We're fortunate. Our CTO Scott Smith, who's very active in COSIN, is a tremendous instructional leader. And so we use our IT staff, are, they're hip deep in instruction. Mm -hmm. Our technology facilitators are really instructional leaders. Um, our principals work very, very closely with our tech staff. So we really have married the work of our technology staff and our instructional staff. So there, there really is a, a sense of embedded respect and appreciation from both ends, and we work very closely together. Right now, what's the most pressing issue for your district? Well, probably our in North Carolina, we're about 30 minutes north of Charlotte. We have faced really tremendous statewide challenges with funding and support for public education. And I would say the challenge is really the, the foundation of funding for education in North Carolina. There appears to be some interest in moving away from that, and yet we know that in terms of economic development and so many other areas, it's just foundational to 
the state. So that's the biggest challenge. The other is that we, our staff, we have a lot of staff that are, have moved on to be superintendents, assistant superintendents, CTOs, principals, assistant principals. So we're constantly having to develop the capacity of, of teachers, teacher leaders. We've also seen over the nine years we've been involved, probably 30 to 40 percent of the staff have retired. Mm -hmm. So we're constantly, you know, hiring. We're a growing community, rapidly growing. So we're preparing for that growth, not just the growth in terms of individuals, but the growth in terms of the capacity to lead and serve in a high level in a digital mm -hmm. conversion. How do you find people who are ready for those roles? Well, one of our, it's interesting when we've received a lot of national attention and our staff are recruited constantly. And on one hand, it's a compliment. I really uh, value that other districts and other superintendents and other leaders say, well, we'd like to have uh, individuals from Mooresville, but a challenge is constantly trying to find the means to identify individuals. And even this morning, we were talking about one of our staff had been recruited away, got a big salary increase, so I'm certainly happy for them. But the challenge, and we don't have somebody ready for that job. So I was talking actually to Scott Smith, our CTO, and I said, well, we'll do what we've done before. We'll have to identify somebody and then to really double down on building their capacity quickly. Mm. So I think a lot of times the thought is, well, I'm going to find the person that's got all those skill sets. And what we found is that we haven't found anybody who was a perfect fit. We had a lot of people who brought skills and experiences in. But I think a lot of it is approaching it from a, as, a, as both a district and a culture that investing in everybody's development is not just an ancillary work. It is essential to everything that we're doing. What is next on the horizon? What do you hope to accomplish within the next year? Well, on a personal level, I'm real excited. Michael Full and I are finishing up a book called Unstoppable Momentum. Uh, Solution Tree is the publisher, and I think it's a really going to be an exciting book that, with a lot of interest around digital conversion and looking at new pedagogies around digital resources. As a local level, we have a humongous construction project going on. We're rebuilding Mooresville High School while we still have students in the school, which is a $44 million project. Wow. And at the same time, we are preparing, we have sent laptops home f for eight years now, fourth through 12th grade. Next year, we're moving, going to send third grade laptops home. And we're constantly pushing the bar in terms of the actual work in the classroom. Again, we're focused on project work and our students working in research and project teams and real excited around the change knowledge that our students are developing, that our teachers are developing, and our community is responding. We're a high growth community, lots of business coming in and a lot of interest in what we're doing with the digital conversion. And you say you're sort of at the bottom of the funding level, so how do you finance all of these projects? Well, we have used that financial model uh, to help a lot of districts find their path. We've had over the last eight years over 10,000 visitors come through Mooresville, and one of the most often asked questions is how do you afford it? And we really, we build it in. My first book, which uh, is entitled Every Child Every Day, I have a chapter dedicated to the resource base and we recommend not to use grants but to go through operating funding and it's real simple we say that if you can take around 200 to 250 dollars per year per student you can fully fund a digital conversion no matter what size the district is hmm. uh, i when i was superintendent in Rico county virginia from 94 to 2004 back in 2000 there we implemented a one-to-one -one with 26,000 laptop computers the price continues to go down, the quality of the devices continues to go up. So it's absolutely fundable and there are currently probably 200 to 300 districts that have deployed in the United States that are using some version of that funding model. Great. Well, Mark, thank you so much for being with us. We Th appreciate it. Thank you, Corinne. It's a pleasure to be with you as well. Thank you. Uh, I'm Corinne Lesh with EdScoop. Thanks for watching.